Yeah. Okay, you were saying that uh, Congress will, you know, basically lie to their constituents of say, yeah, we'll do something about that, and then never do it. Generally, I mean, that's all politicians. Yeah. Right. And recently, Congress, you know, the public opinion polls showed that Congress had like a 9% approval rating. It was somewhere around 12% during the 2010 election. But yet 85% of congressmen were reelected. So obviously, you know, there's a disconnect. People don't trust Congress, but yet they reelect the same people over and over again. Do you intend to address that at all? Or is it just the corporations that you're mad at and their influence? Politicians will be, well, politicians will be reelected and use the funds from corporations to get them reelected, so they can in turn. It's a it's a backstretch system. I'll get elected, you give me money, I'll help your business. That's, business should not be part of politics. Should be part of. And politics should not be included in business either. No. So it's a two-way street. Both sides are equally at fault. Yes. And you guys are opposing both sides, not just we want, we big want, business? All we want to do is create change. We want to make change happen because it's not happening. Okay. And do you think that will happen with simply removing big business from politics, but not politics from big business? It has to be both ways. So you agree? It has to be both ways? It has to be politics, business, politics have to stay out of each other's business. Business Although and the government clearly, have to stay out of each other's. The government business. has to be able to regulate business to some extent, clearly. Yes. Of course. But and why, why do, do you know who it is that requests most of the regulations? It's the businesses themselves. And it's to keep out the small business and keep out competitors. Depending on the regulations. Um, I think, personally, I think that most of the really important regulations are on businesses, are on, say, are deal with safety and deal with um, how they conduct their business and how they deal with their people. Uh, clearly, employees need to be treated fairly, and if the government is gonna, not going to protect us that, from that, what is going to protect us from that? Um, yeah, why would you worry? Why would you write it? Yeah. And there was a uh, raid recently on Gibson Guitar Factory because they were getting their wood from the wrong place. And uh, well, they were those are endangered species. They did, however, comply with, to the best of their knowledge, they have complied with the guidelines uh, of within 20 miles. Is that Gibson? Yeah. Gibson. Yeah. 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 But I think. As the parent, my main concern is with food. Um, oh, yeah. I, mean, I want it. food. It's from Turkey. Or it's from, I saw one in Argentina and Romania. Uh, um, I it was it's from it's, from absolutely, it's absolutely ridiculous when you consider. Um, I looked in Hawaii for a few years, and <laughs> almost all the food in Hawaii was trucked in from out of the country. Or blown in, really. There. It's an uh, it's um, a subtropical paradise. Anything can be grown there, but they have. Uh, Honolulu reminds me a lot of San Antonio. They have worked so hard for so long to get the tourists in that they're pushing out the yeah. Well, a lot of that has to do with regulations as well. Absolutely. The the last dairy farm in Hawaii closed down I think it was three years ago because they were over regulated and it cost too much to comply with regulations they couldn't make a profit so they were forced to close their doors yeah, um, when I when I lived in Hawaii um, uh, my ex-husband was a military but I looked in Hawaii and I inside a gallon of milk the cheapest milk was almost $10 I, I can't just, a gallon and that's because it was shipped in. Absolutely. And you, you couldn't get eggs or anything. And the, the farther out you go for food, the worse off we are. 
Yeah. Well, and then the less fresh it is. Exactly. And there's going to be significant loss of nutrition. And um, not to mention all the chemicals added in to keep it fresh during that period of time. And the, you know, there was a thing recently when they talked about what they do to orange juice. You know, where they pump it into a giant holding vat and like that. suck out all of the oxygen, which turns it into orange water, basically, and then they have to artificially add back the flavor. But no, if you watch the, uh, what is it, the Tropicana commercial, you reach your arm through the little shelf and you get it from the guy that is plucking the oranges off the tree. Yeah, that, that is obviously how it's done. Every, every produce aisle has a wormhole in it, and you just reach in and you know, grab whatever you want. It's fresh from the source. Actually, that, that uh, is illegal. Consuming, well, actually, purchasing raw milk is illegal. Yes, it is illegal. There were some Amish in Pennsylvania that were arrested recently for selling raw milk. Uh, no, that was a federal. That not, not that was the FBI. It's highly regulated, but it's not. Well, it, it was the FBI that raided the Amish farm. There, there, there are federal laws against the purchase of raw milk. We basically it's ignored in many areas, but yeah. Yes. Shouldn't. Shouldn't the people actually have a choice in the matter? I mean, if they want to get raw milk, then yes. they should be able to. Yes. And that's the point we're getting at is a lot of times we don't have that choice. You're being told that this regulation is for your own safety, but yet it should be your choice. Yeah. If you want to consume raw milk or sell raw milk, you should be allowed to. Yeah, even if, if you want to consume certain plants that grow naturally in the wild, you should be allowed to. Yeah. It's but yet there are federal and state regulations against doing such. Yeah, it's kind of like a seatbelt law. It's pointless. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole point is just, you know, I keep Oak Farms and, you know, Borden and all those companies and Pepper. I mean, it, it goes back to the classic example, the Tucker Automobile in the Forest. Tucker started as, uh, after World War II, had an airport hangar. It was like a team of 10 people making these cars. They had the biggest innovations of the time. In the, in the 40s, they had headlights that would turn with the steering wheel so you could see what was coming around the corner. They had, it was the first car to have seatbelts in it, and they had a, uh, a windshield that would eject out on a frontward impact so you didn't have glass shattering into you. And what actually happened is uh, General Motors and Ford tried to buy him out for years and he kept refusing because he knew that what he was doing was better for the consumer, better for the community, and was actually right. And uh, eventually because they had all the pool and all the money and all the power with that particular market, they eventually shut him down. A lot of people are going to do that there. Like that's it. the kind of thing that we're going to do right now. It's like we're in this bigger scale. And that's, that's what we're working on. That's what we're trying to do is take the way to the corporation to regulate what we've never been agreed with, how we can do it, and where we can do it. We're pretty much a. Uh, we're pretty much living off third world countries too. I mean, if you look at where uh, tuna or whatever comes from Ecuador or you know some South American country or some oil comes from the Middle East and some goods even come from Mexico. And, uh, if we're living off of them, doesn't that make us a middle, you know, I mean, a third world country too? Well, if the Fed keeps inflating the currency and driving it down, then We'll basically be a third world country. I think we already are. It's just that we don't know that. Well, it's not visible. Oh, okay. The richest third world country in the world. <laughs>